this this episode got wildly out of hand. <laughs> and if you're watching it, um, there's two parts to the episode. There's an episode that's extremely informative and will teach you about things like Amazon stores, um, life and finance and probably do something great for you. And then there's the other episode and you're going to learn a whole bunch about zombies, guns, you know, current drug conditions with the cartel, world relations type stuff. Equally as important might not pertain to your personal life. So we hope you enjoyed both of these episodes of the No Prisoners podcast. wrapping it up yeah I mean, we're an hour deep i think we hammered a good show <laughs> yeah i don't know we got to know a little bit about justin we got <laughs> to know jack shit about <laughs> tequila sodas and mexican he, he, it's like he kept it that way though <laughs> yeah we at least we know he uh he cares about business and about self-improvement yeah and that's what matters i mean what would we want Justin people to know about justin yeah justin <laughs> i don't know I don't know. What do people say about you? Uh, we were just talking. Yeah, about we were. Before, that I'm an arrogant piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he's not. He's not. But yeah, he's not. But I'm not. He's um, not. People oh. mistake ar- uh, confidence for arrogance. Mm. So that's usually the first thing that I give off to people is that I'm an arrogant asshole. Um, because I, I can relate to that, I think. I've gotten that in the past. I've worked on it. <laughs> it's, it's not something that you should have to work on, though, right? You shouldn't have to apologize for being confident in who you are. It's a problem with how other people view themselves, and that's not anybody else's issue. Yeah, exactly. But that's the working world on we, it. That's the world we live in, right? Where, um, what about my feelings? And that's the reality. Of things I don't know, man. I'm passionate about. Like, here's here's what I think about that, though. I get what you're saying. Let's just be you, and I 100 percent say that. But what I learned is like the people that think your confidence is arrogance are people you just shouldn't have told that to. Like that idea too, or what you're doing too, or what you're. Doing. Yeah, yeah. I think those are. Um, I think there are certain people in your, you know, in your lives or around you, um, that that are too small minded, right? That when you tell them things, if that's how they feel, or people you meet and whatever it may be, right? They're just people that should not be around you, one hundred percent. I think, and not. It's such a slippery slope. Because I don't want it to sound like that everybody, like that you should be getting something from everybody around you. But in reality, you should, right? Everybody should serve your purpose and you should serve everybody's purpose that you're around. It should be a mutual thing that you're growing together. Um, I I forget who said it, but it's if your circle isn't talking about growing, improving, uh, making money, becoming better, um, you're in a cage, not a circle. And also, what's the whole saying is you're the average of the five people closest to you. And I think that's 100% true. If the five people around you I love lazy. that one. That's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, Lazy people that don't want to do anything. You're going to end up lazy and not wanting to do anything. You're a direct reflection of what you choose to re- surround yourself with. Um, and it's not like, you know, people do the whole, oh, well, I'm from a bad area or I grew up rough. We all have a story. Uh, we all have reasons why we can't do something. But if you're going to sit there and tell yourself why you can't do something and use it as an excuse, that's up to you. Um, every person has a story. Every person has shit that they struggled with, um, bad things that have happened to them. Uh, some people have it worse than others, yes. Uh, but if you're going to use it as an excuse to not be the best version of yourself, then you're doing it to yourself. And that's something that a lot of people do. And it's, you know, drop the excuses and just be a better version of yourself. What do you do to, like, help people... Um get to that path or do you participate in any like anything like that like yeah or- yeah i do um i i have a couple like clients and everything that i coach up on that end of things that have just reached out to me right like i don't try to go around getting clients being like oh i'm this life coach but people you know who i've been around or know me end up coming you know i've had a few people come to me and they're like can you help me improve myself and it's yeah it's but they're it's a the number one thing I talk to people about is you have to have a very realistic conversation with yourself. You have to get real with yourself because you can fool other people, but at the end of the day, it's the same, and it all ties back, right, with the fitness. You can try to tell a coach, right, you can hire a coach, you can try to tell them you followed the diet, you followed the training, but the mirror doesn't lie, right? So when you, when you want to improve yourself, when you stand in the mirror, 
do you like who you see? And I don't mean physically. I mean physically as well. But when you look in the mirror, do you like the person that you see back? Because when you look in the mirror, you'll see your mistakes. You'll see your positives. You'll see everything like that. Do you like the person looking back to you? And I'll be the first one to tell you, I've not been the greatest person in my life. I've fucked up. I've screwed people over. And that's all stuff that I've had to come to terms with and accept that I have made those decisions in my life. But I decide to not let the past define me, right? Your past doesn't define who you are now. It adds to the person that you become, but you go through everything in life for a reason. Even if you've made mistakes, if you've wronged people, you've done all that, look at what you learned from it and turn it into a positive. Turn it into a lesson instead of sitting there beating yourself up about it. We all have things that have happened. Like I said, we've all had things that have happened in our past. Uh, We've all lived, you know, parts of our lives that we wish we could change. But you're not your past. Your past doesn't define you. But you have to learn from them. You have to grow from everything you've been through. If you can't do that, if you can't have that really, if you can't stand in the mirror and look at yourself and have that realistic conversation with yourself and know that you can be better and see the flaws and admit that there are things you need to work on, then nobody can help you until you have that conversation with yourself. That's the number one stepping stone is you have to have that conversation and admit that you're not the smartest. Let the ego go, right? You're not the smartest. You're not the fastest. You're not the strongest. You're not the best looking. You're none of these things, right? There's always someone better than you. Drop the ego and learn to heal and accept from your, and accept your mistakes and your shortcomings. When you can do that, you can move forward. So many people live in the past. Oh, my life would be different if my parents did this for me. Oh, my life would be different if this. Oh, that person has that because they're par- like everybody's got a million excuses. But take a look in the mirror and it's what you're doing on a day to day basis. A core, a, a, a direct representation of where you want to be. Because ninety nine percent of the time, with people that are trying to address this issue with themselves, it's not. What you're doing on a day-to-day basis does not directly um, relate. Or Sorry, it directly relates to where you're going to be, not where you want to be. Because most people aren't taking the steps day-to-day and doing the things for themselves or to learn or to be better, to feed that bigger picture of what they see for themselves. Most people are wrapped up, and it's a lot of it has to do with the social media with this generation, Right. Everybody compares themselves to other people online, and this person has this, and and then people go broke trying to impress people that don't give a flying fuck about them, and that's something that and and it it does if it aids to the depression, the anxiety that people feel when they're going about things all wrong, they're approaching things from a a lens that they should, they're seeing things from a lens that they shouldn't be. When you drop all that and stop worrying about what everyone else is doing, stop worrying about how others view you and worry about how you view yourself and what you're actually doing yourself, then you can start changing the world around yourself. Well, I think that um, it's important to, you know, get used to functioning on that level or get comfortable with that stuff because there's a lot of success that I've had you know, in my 30s or that I have coming towards me in the future, that younger 20-year-old me kind of expected that that would come to that version of myself. And the reason it didn't was because that I hadn't done the work to, like, create the environment to, like, yield that amount of either money or, you know, whatever you know, goal you're trying to achieve. And then there's other situations that I've had, you know, in my twenties or whatever, where like we would make a lot of money and then like something would happen where it would like come and go, it would come Mm -hmm. and go. And it was never sustainable because I guess I just hadn't developed or made the mistakes or like done the journey to, you didn't like realize how to capitalize on it when you were hot at that time. Yeah, like I've always had, like I've always been the idea guy. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was like I'd had ideas, like I knew Instagram was going to be a thing. Like, and like I had a lot of people around me at that time that like I wanted to invest time into like building Instagram content. And this is 2011. Mm -hmm. 
And everybody was like, what? I wanted to get all these phones and, you know, have a bunch of iPod, uh, the touch, which was like, it was like an iPad, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't an iPhone. And you get them cheap on Craigslist and just run. And I was running all these like Instagram accounts. My girlfriend at the time was just like, this is dumb. Like I had like, some of the accounts were like, one was uh, strapped and sexy. (laughs) And you just like, it was just like girls that like (laughs) with guns, dude. It was dumb as shit. It was like college. I was a college kid. Um, but it blew up and like, I was like, oh, whatever. And then I abandoned that idea. Cause like, just like the people around me were just like, ah, oh, that's stupid. What are you doing? And now fast forward to 2023 and I'd stuck with it. You know, like who, one of those ideas would have, could have gotten monetized very easily. Yeah. And now like, I know how to do that, but you know, getting to trust yourself or getting to, you know, know yourself is important. Um, and I think that a lot of people, um, the whole purpose of the No Prisoners podcast was having people on that kind of had done that work. Mm-hmm. Whether they, they've, like, verbalized it very consciously, like the way you do, where you have, like, you know, points you can make to, like, get people's minds jogging. Yeah. There are a lot of people that are just, like, in that state of mind that have no idea that they're there. They're just doers. Yeah. Right? You have, like your Justins or your, you know, your Lance Bachmans that are like in your face or like your Andy Frazellas that are like, they're trying to like bring people along. And then there's people that are just doing it. And you know, that's also a unique idea too. Yeah. And it's, you just do the work and then you just, you're free from it all. Yeah. Yeah. And there are a ton of people doing that, right? There are a ton of doers and they're crushers and there's people doing phenomenal. You have no, there's people out there making absurd amount of money that you have no idea. Are, right? yeah, but it's not even just, about the money it's about like the 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 way you are mentally mm-hmm. and like the the confidence and the comfortability i have with my environment now versus then is um it's like the difference between like living in a sauna and like being able to get out of the sauna yeah so like once you're come like could you have you ever been in a sauna and you're just like what if i got stuck in here could i how long would i live <laughs> Like, living like that, where you're just completely lying to yourself, it's just, like, you're just trapped in this hot box, like, just suffering, and you won't, like, you don't even realize that the door's over there, and when you do, you look back on all that, you you look back at all that time, and there's times where, like, I consciously realized I knew what I needed to do, and I just wasn't doing it. You ever beat yourself up about those times? Or did you at one point? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's still times where, um, uh, there, there's definitely like people that I haven't talked to in a long time that I like, I wish I could like reach out to. Yeah. Um, there's people or like situations that I could go back to and just like kind of like talk about it and just be like, what happened there? Like yeah. what went wrong? How, like, what did you learn from this? Like, this is what I took away from it. Kind of like get like a bigger, cause you, you only live like in your own little reality. Mm-hmm. And I've found that if you can kind of look at it through other people's lens, um, even if you don't agree with it, it kind of gives you this ability to, I don't you know, put together a full picture, a yeah. better understanding you you get to you get to appreciate why people do things mm-hmm. and it's not a surprise when people do things there's a plenty of times where you know something happens where everybody's like that's terrible i did blah 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 and i'm like i could have totally seen that happen like a perfect example and this is going to be a terrible one gilmer is uh school shooters mm. like there's times where you hear their story after they've just like l- killed a bunch of children but you hear the shooter's story and nobody wants to sympathize with the shooter, but you hear their story and everybody's like, nobody wants to be like, Oh, I totally see how this happened. Yeah. I mean, it's like he lived with grandma. Nobody was watching him. His parents hated him. He was in and out of foster. Like he had no one to care for this person. Like what, not woe is me, but like this person never developed. We lit a human being. Like it's like letting an egg, you know, germinate or just, you know, eating it. Like, what do you got going, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, looking back, right, there's a, I could, from objectively looking in, there's a million things I would do differently, right? But from where I sit today, I wouldn't change any of it because it made me who I am. But you do get a chance to do it differently. 
in the future because you learn from it mm-hmm. and then you do it differently yeah but going back and changing it that's yeah um i would say like i have done that and been like oh dude i really fucked that up or i would have done this differently or if i hadn't done this i wouldn't be here um but then you analyze it right and you go okay but yeah. now i know what to do differently now i know not to do that and it made me who i am today yeah. Or it contributed to who I am today. Because everything we For do sure. in life, it, can, it adds up, right? There's not one thing that defines, okay, this is how I became this person. That's what I struggle with with having kids someday. It's kind of like you and you. It's interesting when you get people's perspectives on this that are very successful and then have good kids. You're like, what did you do? Because a lot of where I am now is from struggle. And now that I'm kind of like appreciative of it and like realize that that's like the struggle makes the like makes mm-hmm. the progress faster. Like the more you struggle, yeah. the faster you progress in a way if you can kind of do it. So like how do you raise kids and, you know, provide for them, but also like create like a fake struggle so they're not like in danger of struggling because yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I think that's a, that's an extremely hard thing that kind of, going back to like the original point like a while ago about the boomers messing up our generation is that what they messed up was creating struggle. They like made everything super easy for us. Like go to college. So you get a great job. It's like, no, go to get a tech school job, learn how to be a welder. If that works out for you, save up your money. And if you want to be a doctor after that, then, you know, go for it instead of taking out on this debt. So like they made everything like, obtainable and easy they delayed the struggle <clears throat> yeah so then when people got into later points of their life they had to learn how to struggle after becoming adults yeah you see like roommates melting down or kids in college melting down it's Which like is, it's it's actually like i not i don't mean to say that's funny but it's funny like i've been on my i've been on my own since i was like 17 at this point right i'm 28 um you know i've always been you know at this point i've been on my own for so long that when I see and when I see people that live with like six people right and they're like well this is how we afford it I'm like because none of you are trying to be the best version of yourself you're all just fucking frantically trying to figure out how to survive yeah I I have a friend um so I'm happy about my struggle is pretty much you know is the point mm -hmm. like I'm happy about every anything that I went through because it taught me how to survive but it puts you in a in a, like a healthy place when you can appreciate and have like gratitude towards that struggle. It gives you kind of um, it it enables you to stop kind of looking at things that like you would have done differently. It's it because it kind of just frees you from that because you realize like oh I don't I don't need to think about how I would have done that differently or the regret or anything because I appreciate how that happened because it gave me this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you just uh, it's hard. You're 28, I'm 35, Gilmar's in there. When you get to that 27, at like that post-college age, that's when it's harder and harder to like maintain friendships. I found like 28 to 30, um, I felt like I was losing all my friends. And then, you know, for 30 to 31, I was like, dude, this is a weird time. And then now it's like, I have all these friends. But I've noticed now that all of my friends have, like, the commonality that, like, Justin was talking about. Like, everybody's getting after it. Yeah. Everybody's got their thing. They're they're trying to be better. And what I realized, um, and, like, my wife helped me realize this, like, one time we were driving. I was like, dude, like, I feel like just, like, all, the, all these people are just, like, disappearing. She's like, no, like, you're just, you're advancing in your direction. And they're going in their direction you're or old. not. And that's, you're just in going, trajectories are different. You're all evolving into the people that you're, that you're going to end up being. Right? Yeah. And, and I think, I think, cause I'm at that point, right? Like you said, late twenties, um, my, over the past few years, my friend, my friend group has completely like, I, I well, also very, specifically for you because you're doing entrepreneurial and business type things. So when you start like having success or struggle, like, it's harder to relate to people even more so Mm -hmm. because like you're either struggling or succeeding in ways that they can like the average or like a nine to five type job doesn't get. 
and then you build a gap there yeah, as like well. Yeah, like, I don't make a paycheck, right? Yeah. And so, like, when when trying to explain that to people, it's I'm either I either make money one month or I don't. Like, I could make I could not make any money for three months. And I could make a shit ton in one month, right? And people are like, oh, like, that's why I have a nice cushy job. I'm like, okay, that's good for you, but that doesn't work for me. It's not what I want, right? Yeah. Um, so when I get, to, you know, I kind of came to that point in my life where now it's, I surround myself with people who are doing way better than me, right? Because to reach higher levels of success, if all you know is here, but you want to be here, you, how can you get from here to here? If you have no, if you have never seen here, right? Mm. So I, sur- I started surrounding myself with people that are at the level that I want to reach. I know for sure. Because then it makes it attainable, right? But it do you feel it, an obligation in doing that? I started to notice that I wasn't looking out for people like below me. And that's kind of when I when I was in that spot that you're in, that's when I kind of met Gilmar or like a little bit before that I started realizing I'm like, yo, I got to start like finding people that aren't like I can't be so focused or singularly focused on like surrounding myself with people that are like above me so that I can get there. I was like, I got to be doing what those people are doing for the people. So below. that's what I was just going to say. I started, so what I realized, I came to the same realization, right? I started doing what those people were doing for me, for people that I knew that were here and I'm here and those people are there, trying to get them to hear for them, right, and mm-hmm. help them. I just started doing the same thing that those people were doing for me to the people that are lower. And is that how, like, that coaching yeah, I don't even want to call it like coaching, right? Because like I, I don't really like. It's it's not even it's, a marketed. It's more, thing. Yeah, it's like more of like a mentorship thing, right? Like I just I just help, and it's not a, like I don't. I, it's not about making money or anything like that. It's just you know if if someone wants the help, and I don't make it easy on anybody, right? Because if I'm gonna, I have a lot of stuff that like I have a lot of shit that I do on a day to day basis. I have a lot of shit that I worry about, a lot of shit that I'm responsible for. If I'm gonna take time out of my day. To help you improve, I, I'm i not going to do it for nothing. Like If I tell you like to do something or I help you with something, like I want to see you actually doing it. I'm mm. not just going to waste my time. I'm not going to waste your time either telling like, you know, there's a, there's a million and one ways to look at it and there's selfish ways to look at it where it can be like, oh, well, I just, I'm too busy. But it's, it's not that I'm too busy. It's just that I want... If I'm taking my time out to do it, I want to. I want that to be respected, right? And I also want you to respect the fact that you're taking time out of what you're doing to listen to it, type of deal. How do you manage like all the, all the ideas and things that you have, like choosing what to do and what not to do? So, I structure i failing to uh, uh, failing to. Uh, a failure failing to, to plan. failing yeah. to plan is planning to fail, right? That's how um, you know he didn't memorize all these talking <laughs> points. <laughs> um, I when I go to bed, like you know, every night I do the same thing. I, you know, pack my bag for the next morning for the gym and everything, and change of clothes. And I know my schedule, right? I know from X time to about whenever I get done the gym, usually like seven thirty. You know, I head to the office. Till about five, I know th- I'm focused on one direction, right? I'm focused on one thing, and that's, you know, here. And then I go home. I then do my half hour of evening cardio. And then I get on my laptop and I start working on my two. I have two management companies. So then I break up, you know, an hour and a half for this, an hour and a half for that. And then whatever else there is, I attack after. It's not like that every day. You know, but that's pretty much the schedule, right? I just have a schedule for myself where it's when I'm focused, when I'm working on one thing, I'm not working on anything else. None of th- nothing else from any of the other aspects can go into that time that I'm working on that thing. Mm. I just, I just segment it all. So that way, if this, you know, if this two hours is dedicated to, you know, management company one, that's all I work on in those, in those two hours. And then I switch to the other. That's what cool. are you managing? So I do, um, we do, uh, me and my business partner manage uh, passive income streams for people. So we start and run um, e-commerce businesses, um, property. We do a little bit of property management with Airbnbs, everything like that. Interesting. Yeah. 
Amazon businesses. We've heard of this before. Mm-hmm. Interesting. How did you like? How did you get into the Amazon platforms? Was, we were we were broke. I was brokering uh, deals for a management company, and really, it kind of ties back into what we were talking about just a minute ago with the, you know, how do you not neglect the people down here, right? So I was brokering for a management company. And they kept turning down people because they didn't have the capital that they were looking for. They didn't have the credit lines to support it. So then me and my business partner took a step back and go, okay, all these people are getting denied. So, well, there's obviously a gap that we can fill here. Mm. So then we just kind of started figuring out, like, you know, and we, and, you know, we have people that we know that, you know, also run management companies. And we kind of asked them and started, you know, d- diving into the information and seeing, what all in it entailed. Um, and then once we realized that it's really not that complicated, we're like, okay, well, all those people that are looking to improve their lives, right, to have another source of income, but they're getting turned down by all these management companies because they don't have 50 grand in capital and they don't have, you know, $30,000, $40,000 credit card limits per month, mm-hmm. right? So then we were like, okay, well, we can take people that don't have credit limits and we can put up our credit lines, Right? They have capital, but they don't have credit lines. We can take them. Mm. Because then it's really, we also have our own stores, right? So it's really no risk to us. Because we invoice them then for the products that we buy on our credit lines. And so that way they can just, you know, pay us for it. If they don't pay, well, you know, they have, you know, I, we won't get into terms. But if they don't pay within the terms, their contract gets nullified and they're no longer a client. Well, then people are like, we're sitting on all this product. Well, we can just put it in our stores then mm. and recoup our money. So it's very low, very low risk. Do you guys keep physical products, though, or is this just like a virtual? Yeah, so pretty much. Um, drop ship. No, Amazon kind of did away with drop shipping. Um, really, Amazon pushed the uh, FB, fulfilled by Amazon. Mm. Um, they really migrated towards that. And the reason being, because they used to do fulfilled by merchant, which was great uh, because we had contacts with um, manufacturers and they would drop ship for us. Which Amazon didn't want any drop shipping on their platform. So what really happened was Amazon opened up too many warehouses in the past couple of years. And if people don't know what drop shipping is, I feel like we're going to divide this podcast into two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. And just to be like the light in the dark. Good in the evil. Um, Drop shipping is where you sell a product virtually through a website. Like you post a picture on your website, say you're selling the product, and when they check out at your store, you call the manufacturer or whoever actually has the product. They ship the product directly to the customer, and then you pay the Mm -hmm. manufacturer. Yeah, you're. People don't necessarily know what drop shipping is. Yeah, so pretty much you collect payment from the customer. And then it gets fulfilled by a third party. Interesting. Where you're really the third party. What, um, so you have those two separate businesses. Like, why two separate ones? Like, why aren't they? One's like, owned by only me, and one's owned by me and my business partner. Mm. Interesting. How's he feel about you having one, just you? So there's the, there's certain things that we run through there, um, and that I also run through there personally. Um, and we decide certain things, right? If certain clients will go onto mine, certain ones will go onto both. Mm. So there's a criteria. Yeah. What, um, why you, so like you're back in the physical world here at LBK doing like operating like within one of like the construction parts mm-hmm. of this business. Like what was there like a co- like, were you trying to get back into being offline kind Um, of a thing and grow a business like that was more tangible like why grow this business with nick and like and and do this when you could easily spend just like all of your time growing those other two management companies they don't require that much time at this point um they're kind of set up so you kind of would just like chill if you didn't have anything else to do you would just like not have to do anything yeah yeah. And like, I mean, I could fill it with, to- with things, right. And I could venture off into other things. Um, but like, even like, I don't want to even make it sound complicated for people. Anybody can do what we do yeah. for themselves. Uh, the reason why people decide to go with a management company is because it does, if you don't know what you're doing, it takes up a lot of your time and it's frustrating and you can spend a lot of money 
with very little return if you don't know what you're doing. Um, you know, we know we we have supplier relationships, everything like that. So we we know how to source the products quickly. Um, we're able to get you know stock on hand very quickly and get them loaded, you know, sent to Amazon for our clients and, and get them you know selling very fast compared to someone doing it on their own. Uh, by no means does anybody have to use a management company; they can do it on their own. And I don't want to you know shy people away from it. Like you could do it on your own. Um, add the Amazon Scout Chrome extension to your computer. It'll give you every detail on every product on Amazon. It'll tell you how much it's selling a month. Um, volume wise I'll tell you how much money that you know that that's making um, and you can see kind of if you can share the market on that um, you're just gonna have to sift through suppliers to find one that's reliable that gives you a quick turnaround time and everything like that so where do you so like where do you keep product at then you, you don't uh, amazon yeah so, so they are keeping the product in their warehouse yeah so you get charged a it's an f it's, so it's a fulfilled by amazon fee every product has its own fee right it's calculated it goes based off of storage size um reference fee all those things add so up you're to it. paying to store your products in a warehouse that's owned by amazon so that they can control the shipping so that's the biggest thing with the shipping is amazon if if you ship from outside of amazon there's a lot of issues with populating tracking numbers, and Amazon's very big on that, and it can affect your score health. Mm. So your your store score health um, can go down if your tracking isn't one hundred percent up to Amazon standards. So they run the tracking th- Amazon through does their ev- network. Yeah. So if you're off their network, you're like Series B. You you have to submit like you have to send like the track. It's. Amazon pretty much made it almost impossible for you to sell. I don't want to say impossible, but close to it to sell products that aren't fulfilled by Amazon um, just by the sheer price alone. Um, Amazon opened up too many warehouses in the past few years. So they really made this push to push for FBA, uh, which did make FBA a little bit cheaper for people. Okay. So um, fulfilled by Amazon. It does make it very convenient though. Um, you literally just ship products into Amazon when they sell. Amazon handles it all. Can I ask about money? Yeah, like what about how, it? How much does it cost to like have a management company hey. like yours to like do like say I'm a interested passive in- investor, passive income, you know, is what it, I'm so, interested. So so there's so many questions here. There's so many criteria here. Mm. Like, are you someone that has credit lines? Say I have like, you know, thirty thousand dollars in cash, and I have a ten thousand dollar credit line. Can you help me? Yeah. Okay. Can you help me if I have? I can help anybody. Okay. Because even somebody with no capital and no cash, mm. I can have another store open for us and myself under their name and pay them a, a percentage for opening up a store for us. Because so you that only, because you can have only so many names, so you're paying them for their identity, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they get paid to just to they make money just for having a store. Dude, I might become an identity consultant. Yeah, that's interesting. So because Amazon only allows one one um, store per name per household. Does it build your credit to have an Amazon store like that? I, well, it so if you're using personal credit lines, then. Um, as long as you're paying everything off, right? Um, then yeah, sure. The more you're utilizing things, but the quicker you're paying it off, it can help. Um, most of the time, we suggest everybody run. Everybody should run an Amazon store through an LLC. Should open a business credit card and run everything through an LLC, um, because everybody should have an LLC anyway. How do people get in touch, like with you or your company, to like, you know, say someone's listening to this and they like want to talk more about this? Because I feel like there's like a whole bunch of information or questions somebody might. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> my email is probably the, for that, for questions regarding that, my email is probably the best way to get in touch with me. And that would be uh, justin at jtrmanagement.com. Um, that would be the best way of getting in touch with me. Um, just because it keeps everything in one central location. All inquiries go to that uh, i don't we don't run a website uh, you know i provide all information on you know um 
decks on everything once someone reaches out and everything like that. Uh, we mostly just operate off of word of mouth with that side of things. Um, how many, like, like how quickly is that company or those companies growing? Like, is there still, because I remember the Amazon thing was really just, hot yeah. for a while. Like, is it still, because I had an opportunity to get into the Amazon thing. Was it probably two two years ago? Yeah, something like that. And just the way it was sold to me just was very, like, they didn't do a good job selling, and then all of a sudden we got to, like, close to doing it, and then a random, like, extra $35,000 was requested, and we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's just, we're also like, we're giving you already all this other money. Like, what's going yeah, on so here? so, like, the max I really charge, so we'll go over that. Max, max I charge, and this is, again, entirely dependent on situation. It depends on if we have too many clients right and everything the max i'll charge is like 35 grand 40 grand max um there are management companies out there charging a hundred thousand dollars to do this kind of stuff yeah um, which is absolutely ridiculous um it really so the switch to fba actually made the process a lot faster uh because when it was fbm before uh, fulfilled by manufacturer doing the drop shipping there was like a three-month warm-up period mm. um where if you could only list so many products where Amazon would flag you because they kind of knew what you were doing. So they could, they wanted to see if you could handle it. They would and then would much, you ramp up your inventory so that you, if you carried too much too quickly, they'd be like, you they can't knew, support they, this. Well, they knew you were doing like a drop shipping type of deal. Because mm. so they, they're like, oh, you don't have a 100,000 square foot warehouse. Mm-hmm. What's going on here? Yeah. So the switch to FBA helped that. Um, what we're seeing for most people currently is, you know, don't expect anything the first 30 days. The first 30 days is setting up the store. Um, it's going to take like two weeks for you to set up the store to begin with. Um, and if you don't have an LLC, like we don't take on clients that don't file, that don't get an LLC. Um, we recommend everybody runs it through an LLC. I don't care if you use personal cards or credit card, what, however you do it for like the purchasing end. Uh, but we tell everybody, you know, to operate under an LLC. Um, so that, you know, depending on, who you file with, we use rush filing. Um, I can have an LLC tomorrow uh, in, in the state of PA, at least. I can have a, I can file an LLC with them at 12 p.m. and I have one by 5 p.m. Yeah. Um, so that's not usually an issue. But the first 30 days is really set up. Um, and then really the first 60 days is um, if we, if we had recently done an order, we can get products loaded in for you. Uh, if we have to order specifically for your store, you're gonna you're gonna be waiting about three weeks to get those in, get them shipped to Amazon. Um, which, when we depending on the price we sign a client up for, uh, your first your first bit of um, product is included in your startup fee. So it's not like you start up and then we're like, oh, you need to you know charge five grand worth of product to your card. We have we we account for that in the setup fee. So as soon as you, you know, as soon as you get set up with us, we order products that we already know is hot and selling. This seems well thought out. Yeah. What, um, what kind of like returns are people getting? So, you know, first six months, let's call it, you're probably seeing about 1500 to 3k max in profit, depending on credit lines. Um, and then from there, just the store health grows. Um, people with good credit lines, we're seeing, you know, um, netting you know, six to eight a month around month 10 to 12. Okay. I guess like where, where does this collapse at? Like, where's the collapsing point? Um, it's like, it's, it's a very unique model because Amazon's literally funding their inventory and their, the most expensive part of their organization by having small individual people like, pay for it it's like a mm-hmm. it's kind of like like it's like a it's like a beehive yeah. where amazon is the hive and all of the customers and all these stores are each doing their own little part to keep amazon alive 100 percent. and i mean the collapse i mean amazon earning reports showed that amazon's running strong and their future you know their projected growth looks incredible still um you know, the collapse would be Amazon being, you know, sh- shit in the bed. Shit in the bed. Like, and, and when that I, happens, we're two in- years ago, I was like, the the guy that we were dealing with was selling these things so heavily that 
he like became a millionaire overnight. That's and, the thing is like, and I was one of my questions was like, the saturation here has there has to be a saturation point, and he he was a good talker and like had his good points, but like I know money and I know money science and like I just like I was like where where are we in this in this evolution? Well, like how many stores are there? Like if I invest if I give you thirty five grand today. Like, are is this time next year? Are there too many stores where like I'm not really getting that return I, anymore? I don't know exactly how many stores there are, but I know I I want to say it's weekly. Uh, I might be wrong. I might be. I think it's weekly. Um, Amazon has 198 million users check into Amazon Prime a week. Um, and you have to look at look at the business sense of some people. People start these stores, right? We can look at sheer numbers of the stores. There are people who start these stores who are idea people, mm. right? That aren't follow through people. So how many of these people have stores, but they're not doing anything with it. They're just getting frustrated and going, Oh, this, this shit doesn't work. And then right? just exists out there in this. Room. And then how many people are on there doing the thing, right? Doing it. So you're saying like there's like a bell curve mm -hmm. like with anything. So there's anything. A, there's performers and there's non-performers. So ne maybe looking at it as saturated is wrong. Maybe looking at it as like making sure you're working with a management company or you yourself are conducting your store in a way that is going to ensure that it's successful no matter what. Yeah, like if you're going to do one on your own, make sure that you're going all in, right? Don't go half-assed in any well, don't go half-assed into anything. If you want something to succeed, go all in. Um you know, the only thing that I could see, right, is if if society starts rejecting e-commerce, which I think the numbers alone like on a, like a daily basis, I think it's like something like 15 to 18% of the population utilizes e-commerce. There's no way to me that it could go lower. I think I think if, we're only going to if it's gone to the point where e-commerce isn't accepted anymore, I think and you probably reference this in episode 1 of the show. This the machine gun mounted to the truck might be coming <laughs> into play at that point. Yeah. It's like if everybody gives up on e-commerce, like something significant would have had to have happened yeah. to push everybody off of it. Well, because we're, it's kind of like embedded into the way we do things now that like it would have to be like, you know. Well, especially here in America, I mean, most of people are lazy. Uh, I call it the, am right now, the current generation, right? Uh, the people that want, they, everybody wants something for nothing, right? That's what we see all the time. People want success overnight. I call what's going on right now is the Amazon Prime generation. Because mm. everybody is so used to, at, like, you order something, you get it the next day. Is it kind of ironic that, like, you feel a certain way about people, like, performing and doing a certain, like, level with their life, but you're also <laughs> feeding them through Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're, like, you're you're yeah, feeding exactly. both ends of the snake. <laughs> I guess it's like sitting there, like with a bag of heroin in front of a junkie, and being like, <laughs> "This is bad for you, but I'll sell it to you cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to you next day." Yeah, I mean, trust me. I you get can it. order from Amazon in Justin uh, Justin's eyes as long as you're hitting the gym in the morning and you got your thirty minutes of yeah, cardio. Like, listen, man, I, I don't want to go to the store either. Like, I got so much other shit. It's got that Amazon I, stores to run. Mm -hmm. I got so much other shit I would like to worry about that. Like, I mean, I do. I order all. Like all my food gets pre is prepped and delivered. All my drinks get delivered by Amazon every two weeks. Like, yeah, yeah, I I do utilize it. Um, but honestly, like if Amazon goes away, right? In this, we're in a lot bigger shit in the world. So if I ever about. if I ever ran into you at like a farmer's market, would that be a problem? Like, <laughs> like, no, I'm you're saying no longer. yeah. I'm like would like. It would, would, would like would business is bad like you're just like what, <laughs> what are you doing justin like where, what's wrong with amazon why aren't you ordering? selling beats why aren't you ordering because <laughs> of farmer. doesn't amazon have lettuce <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah. dude this was a killer show yeah man it was we, a roller coaster. We ripped it. <laughs> yeah, we did, dude. <laughs> we ripped it. I feel like maybe we should record two intros and just be like, <laughs> we were not going to tell you which show's which. Yeah. <laughs> One of them, super informative. Informative. 
informative. Yeah, yeah. One of them and one of them is fucked. and one of them is gonna make you crash. Yeah, you talking about cars and guns. You gotta laugh. <laughs> you so many TikTok clips out of that. <laughs> yeah, there's t- the one's the TikTok episode. The other one's like safe for work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. This was the break. One's break SFW, right? Yeah, 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 SFW. dude. Yeah, we're gonna have to like hide the. One. We're gonna like. Oh, dude, this was killer. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, um, thanks for coming on. No, I thank you guys for having me. I greatly appreciate it. It was a great time. Yeah, I was glad, dude. I've been hearing so many good things about you from Gilmar that, like, it sounded like I was never going to actually meet you. It seemed like you were a lie for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when Gilmar, because, like, me and Gilmar used to see each other a lot, and now we see each other not as much. And, like, Gilmar was like, yeah, I got a girlfriend. She goes to the other school. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, you don't know a guy named Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, dude. <laughs> He's, he's fake. He's, he's, he, he, we're doing. We're talking. We're setting up a world domination over here at LBK. I was like, "You shut up!" I'm <laughs> yeah. doing world domination too out here. Yeah, he's six three and he drives a cool car. <laughs> <laughs> he drinks tequila sodas. Yeah, tequila sodas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man. Um. All right. So we got Gilmar, myself, Justin. Uh, we'll put. The links in the description. Gilmar will give me all that stuff to put in the links mm. section. So if you want to find him, talk to him more about um, things or Amazon stores or whatever, you can find him. Otherwise, this was for your listening pleasure. <laughs> and um, do you have anything to say? No, just, uh, I mean. You know, I learn, put you on the spot there. Learn, improve, be a better version of yourself. And don't be a shitty person. Oh, yeah. It's too short. Yeah, good people. Oh, yeah, there it is. Dude, Gilmar, how's it going? Good, man. Chill. You're chilling. Learned a lot about guns today. All right, cool. <laughs> well, this is No Prisoners Podcast, uh, two-part episode. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs>